Hello everyone, welcome to this short debate where we'll be discussing the topic the house strongly believes that the law of the strongest prevails. Yes indeed, these men have built the society we live in and what we are now, but at the expense of who? Uh, marginalized minorities such as African descendant minor, uh, communities or women who have been underestimated to do a uh, man's job History teaches us that colonizers and American feudal lords uh, had the power. They dominated whom they considered beneath them and uh, allowing uh, a racism to have as a consequence slavery. In addition, during and after the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, uh, low class workers protested against the unhuman conditions they experienced at work. These uprisings um, against their employers and the law facilitated these employees to force these uh, political leaders to reconsider. Hey, maybe these people need motivation. Let's give them what they ask. Well, uh, they didn't say it that way, obviously, but it did work. They did change uh, what the peasants and what the citizens required. Better payment, uh, better conditions preventing uh, deadly accidents, uh, a better quality of life. Uh, for example, um, for example, the um, the rebellion of the black crowd uh, who eradicated this uh, atrocious activity of slavery. So, what is the message in here? The strength of the weakest altogether makes a strong voice that will be heard. First, we need to stop thinking that all of those elements that you mentioned are a reason to be grateful for. We have all of that, except for democracy, of course. Um, however, we used to have very organized political systems too. We had a language, language that our ancestors lost because of the education they taught us. Uh, we had science that it was not good enough at their invaders, at their, at their eyes, at these invaders' eyes, and now we got theirs. Remember, and doesn't justify the means and the coercive means that these powerful kingdoms used against our ancestor was not justifiable. This is a reminder showing that brute strength settled in our territories with powder and guns, exerted power on the natives, demonstrating who the richest, the strongest, and the most developed group was. On the other hand, Righteousness has not been always represented by these last century white governments. As a matter of fact, corruption on their species um, about moral and a promised heaven is still on the microphones. Many politicians, not all likely, prophets of God, uh, defenders of the privileged, have revealed the truth. They talk about moral, but they don't practice it at all. Then, why cannot black and white men and women who are rich work together in order for solutions to be found through community work and a right finance management could be established as well? The law of the strongest doesn't prevail. The law that prevails must be the law of the nation, the law of the unprivileged, the law of the strong minds, the law of the strong skills. Fortunately, in our current times, Citizens do realize how corrupted and weak our leaders can be and how easy it is to overthrow their arrogant supremacy. Fortunately, uh, we have learned through the injustices of our past that we can now require them to govern us honestly. And we can show them that uh, the strong ones have been always us, the ones who pay the taxes, the ones who voted for them the ones who put them in that throne, and the ones who can easily take them out of it. Thank you so much.